I want to do some sample calculations in quantum mechanics using Dirac bracket or bracket notation. And in particular, I'm going to do those sample calculations for the example of a spin one particle. A spin one particle might be a Z boson or some composite uh, atom, atomic state, or nuclear state, or something. But we're going to consider a spin one particle. And in particular, we're going to look at a particle that's in the following state. I'm writing the state in the basis, the angular momentum state's basis for SZ, the Z component of angular momentum, in the standard notation J comma M inside our ket for J total angular momentum, M, Z component. And so these are all going to be one comma something states. So I'm writing my state psi as 3i over 5 times the 1, 0 basis state minus 4 fifths times the 1 minus 1 basis state. That's my defining standard. Just I've got a particle in that state, and I want, gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask some questions about it. Uh, over here for reference later, I've written down matrix representations of a few of these operators, a few, a few relevant operators and states in the SZ basis. These are all matrix representations in that basis. So the SZ hat, Z component of angular momentum operator, is just H bar times this very empty matrix. It's diagonal with the 1, 0, and minus 1 H bar uh, eigenvalues there. The SY hat operator, the Y component of spin angular momentum operator, in the SC basis is this funny thing with h bar over square root of 2 times a bunch of zeros and plus or minus i's. And then down here I have the z basis state representations of the y component of angular momentum eigenstates. 1, 1, y is this combination of the three z eigenstates written as a matrix. Okay, so that's just for reference. To start with, though, I want to ask a simpler question. I just want to ask, what's the probability, if I have a, if I have a particle in state psi, What's the probability that I'll measure it having z component of angular momentum equals plus h bar, or equals zero, or equals minus h bar? We'll start with plus. To do that, I want to ask a question. I want to say, uh, I, I want to ask the question, and here's my state, and I want to ask the question, are you in the state that has s equals plus h bar? Well, I know what that is. To ask a question in quantum mechanics, we use a bra vector, a, 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 the Dirac bra uh, for that state. So we say the bra of 1, 1 acting on state psi, that's supposed to be a psi really, uh, acting on psi, that is the calculation we're going to do. We're going to do that bra with that ket. Uh, remember this 1, 1 is by default in the z basis, the sz basis, uh, if I don't have any other labels on it. And then that absolute square of that is the probability to measure sz equals plus h bar. That's what it means. So I'm going to take the absolute square of this value. Well, what do I do? The one for, in my particular case, 1, 1 is the bra vector coming in, and my, my state is 3i over 5 times 1, 0 minus 4 fifths times 1 minus 1. And so, again, numbers factor out from Dirac Brockett notation, so it factors right through. This is equal to 3i over 5 times the 1, 1 state, meeting up with the 1, 0 state, minus 4 fifths times the 1, 1 state, meeting up with the 1, minus 1 state. And the fun part here is that because this is an orthonormal basis, because these are normalized states, and because they are or have different eigenvalues, they are orthogonal states. And that means that 1, 1 meeting with 1, 0 is just 0. And 1, 1 with 1 minus 1 is also 0. So this is just 0. So the probability is 0 for this particular case. I've got no chance of measuring it. And you could have seen that from here, right? There's no coefficient that's the 1, 1 state. There's 0, 0 multiplying that. So of course it's going to be 0. Similarly, I can say that my probability for measuring s equals 0, I'm going to have to do the same thing, but finding the bracket with 1, 0 with my state. So I'll do the same thing. My bracket of 1, 0 with psi is equal to, I'll skip a step and go to this step, I guess I, I'll say it's 3i over 5 times 1, 0 bra with 1, 0 ket minus 4 fifths times my 1, 0 bra with my 1 minus 1 ket. And again, 1, 0 with 1 minus 1, those are different states, that's just 0. But this first one, that's the same state. It's a bra with its own ket, its media itself, that is equal to 1 because it's a normalized state. So this is just 3i over 5. 
That was supposed to be a 5, really it was. And so the absolute square of this, 1, 0 with psi, the absolute square is going to be, well, the absolute square is just this times its own complex conjugate, so it is 3i over 5 times minus 3i over 5, and the i times minus i gives you plus 1. It's guaranteed to be positive. This is just 9 25ths, or 36%. Yay, it's a calculation. I can do the calculation. Um, and then finally, I can ask the final question. I can ask, what is 1 minus 1 with psi? And I hope you can see immediately what's going to happen based on these examples. The 1 minus 1 bra is going to meet the 1, 0 ket and kill it. 1 minus 1 is going to be, meet 1 minus 1 and match. And I'll get it that this is going to be minus 4 fifths. So my probability of, is, going to, is the absolute square 1 minus 1 with psi is the absolute square, which is 16 25ths, or 64%. So that's an example of just doing simple probability calculations uh, in the basis that it was already written in. That, I, I could have just read those numbers off of here, really, since it was already written in that basis. But doing it this way, not that much more work. On the other hand, I've written up here my SY, my, my Y vectors. I want to ask the same question now. Um, from the looks of it, it's going to be hard to squeeze this all over into this column, isn't it? I seem to have bled over a little bit. Um, I tell you what, I'm just going to save myself a little room. <laughs> See how this goes. All right. So uh, now I want to know what about SY equals plus h bar 0 or minus h bar. Here's my question this time. I want to know if I'm doing the Y measurements instead. What do I come up with? And for that, I'm going to go through and just do these same things. I'm going to try these same calculations in the y basis. And for that, well, I need to do my brackets again. Uh, I, I'll do the bracket of 1, 1, y bracket. That the, y, the, the y subscript I'm putting in there means that's the 1, 1, y, uh, y uh, eigenstate instead of z eigenstate. So 1, 1 with psi. And for that, uh, what can I do with this? Well, I know what this is, this 1, 1, y thing. I, I know what that is in terms of my sz. Uh, I, I need to write it out that way. Uh, maybe, I should do a, maybe I should do a little side calculation to write that out, just to point out that the, that the bra, or the, the ket rather, the 1, 1, y ket is going to be equal to, looking at this thing, it's 1 half times 1, 1 in my z basis. I could put a z subscript here, but that's my default, so I'm not putting a subscript. 1 half times that, uh, plus i square root of 2 over 2, times the 1, 0 state, minus 1 half times the 1, minus 1 state. That's my ket version for the 1, 1, y state. Just taking it from this matrix form, copying it over in ket form. And when I, so when I do that up here, when I reverse it to make a bra vector up here, what I have to do when I reverse it, I take the complex conjugate of each coefficient when I turn the ket into a bra. So I get 1 half times the 1, 1 bra minus i square root of 2 over 2 times the 1, 0 bra, minus 1 half times the 1, minus 1 bra. All that multiplying or acting on, depending on how you think of it, multiplying, what do I have over here? 3i over 5 times my 1, 0 ket, minus 4 fifths times my 1, minus 1 ket. There we go. I've got all that put together. Uh, if you see where this turned into that, I'm just going to erase this because I don't need to refer back to it anymore. I've got that. I've got what I need. And here, what do I do? I multiply it out. Uh, normally, I would say I'm going to multiply this out and do sort of a FOIL thing, except it's not FOIL because it's three terms times two terms. But I'm going to expand it out, give me a total of six terms. But in my heart, I know what these are going to do, right? When I multiply the first term here by each term over there, it's just going to meet up with each one. But I look at the brackets there. I've got a 1, 1 and a 1, 0. That's, gonna, that's not going to contribute anything. I've got a 1, 1 and a 1 minus 1. That's not going to contribute anything because that bracket is 0. 
So this term won't contribute at all. I'll get a 0 plus 0. Yeah, hold this wrong. The next term, though, I'll get the one, the one zero state multiplied by one zero, that gives me something, that's non-zero. So I'll get, if multiplying these coefficients, looks like minus i square root of two times three i, the minus i and the plus i cancel out, I'll get plus three square root of two over 10 times this bracket, I'll write it in, one zero bra with one zero ket, plus zero, because that's another zero term. It doesn't contribute anything. And then this one, plus zero, because it's one minus one bra with one zero ket. And then here, those will meet up. That'll work. Plus four tenths. One half times four fifths is four tenths, or two fifths, but this is tenths. Four tenths times that bracket, one minus one with itself, one minus one. And so this whole thing, the brackets that I've written out here are just ones. So this turns out to be 4 plus 3 square root of 2 over 10 is my result of this calculation. Yay, that, that's the result. And I suppose um, I could jot down, I, I, I wrote down what the number was for that in case you're ever interested in knowing the number. 0.8243 about... 0.8243 is about the value you come up with there. So my probability of measuring Sy equals plus h bar then is the absolute square of 4 plus 3 square root of 2 over 10. Square that thing. And, and it comes up to be some, some messy equation. I mean, there's nothing easy here, but it's about... Uh, I did this calculation, it's about 67.9% is what I come up with for that. It's an answer. I could do the same thing to say, so that, that's my first one, uh, I could do the same thing to say what is the, the overlap, the, what is the amplitude for the one zero y state with psi. Uh, this time I'm going to do it a slightly different way, just to mix things up a little, show you another way of doing this calculation. I could do this as a matrix. I could, I could use our matrix mechanics, our matri matrix representations, to make this happen. Uh, I could say that in the SZ basis, I know what these matrix representations are. For the 1, 0 bra, it's just the conjugate transpose of the 1, 0 ketz representation. So it is 1 over square root of 2 times the row vector. Conjugate transpose of this is just 1, 0, minus 1 times this one, my psi vector, is just, I can read off the, the representation of the SC basis, because these, these are the SC states, it's just going to be 0 for the first component, 3i over 5 for the second component, and minus 4 fifths for the third. There you go, that's my matrix for matrix representation of psi. So in that basis I have this, and it turns out I can just do matrix multiplication now to get this answer. It turns out that this equals, what do I do? 1 over square root of 2. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my board space more wisely. This equals 1 over square root of 2 times, what do I get? 0 plus 0 plus 4 fifths. That's nice. So I guess that is 4 over 5 square root of 2, or I could write it as... Uh, 4 square root of 2 over 10. Do I have that right? I think I have that right. 4 square root of 2 over 10. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, somehow I thought I had a minus sign different than this in my notes. So uh, I wonder if I have gotten that wrong or gotten it right. The, pr the probability is the same regardless. I was just trying to get the, get the minus signs right. Um, I'm getting a plus here. One zero, oh, is that one zero minus one? No, it's not. This is supposed to be one zero one. Huh? Sorry, one zero one. That's the fix. One zero one. So this is a minus here and minus and minus. Okay, good. So I've got that probability, uh, or I got that amplitude, the, the amplitude, and so the probability of getting Sy equals zero is the absolute square of that. 1, 0, bra in the y basis, times psi, absolute squared, which will be 
what is that, 4, 16, 32 over 100, or 32 um, percent. You can actually see, looking at this, 67 plus 32 is 99.9 percent, .9 actually. Uh, this is almost exactly just a combination of these two states and none of the last state. We could, we could subtract and see that we're at like 0.1 percent chance for the third state. If I were to work it out, I prefer this way, don't you? Don't you like this? I like this way better. If I were to work out the 1 minus 1 y state with psi and work that out in the SZ basis, I would have this thing, conjugate transpose, 1 half times 1, conjugate transpose is i square root of 2, and here's the minus 1, that's the minus 1 I was thinking of, that times 0, 3i over 5, minus 4 over 5, and if I multiply that all together, I'm not going to do it all in detail, uh, I end up getting um, 4 minus the square root, whoops, whoops, wrong thing, 4 minus 3 square root of 2 over 10. So my probability of measuring my 1 minus 1 y state, uh, if I'm in state psi, is that squared, winds up being, I guess this, the number for that, before I square it is about, where did I put the number before I square it? Point, negative point oh two four three, negative zero point zero two four three, and you imagine squaring that, this is about, it's tiny, um, zero point zero two, did I get that right? Thought I got it right, no, right, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, so this is, I get 0.059%. 0.059% is a tiny, tiny percentage. It's less than 0.1%, almost half of 0.1%. So it's tiny. Uh, but that's our those are our probabilities for the state. That's how you calculate probabilities given these states, and uh, you can use these in a lot of other places. Uh, just for instance, uh, to give you one more, one more thing you can do with these results, I've calculated these probabilities individually, but I could use that. I could use those probabilities, for example, to tell you what the representation of psi in the SY basis was. I could say that my psi is represented in the SY basis as, um, I could say that representation is this whole thing. It's 4 plus square root of, or 3 square root of 2, sorry, keep writing square root of 3, 4 plus 3 square root of 2 over 10, and the next, that was this first one, the bracket there, um, well, well I, I'm skipping a step, I should be clear, that this representation is always, is always the 1, 1 with psi, 1, 0 with psi, you just take your basis states as the bras, 1 minus 1 with psi, and you put your, your state as the ket, and so for us, again, I've done those calculations, and this is where I get my 4 plus 3 square root of 2 over 10 for this, this one, and here I get my minus 4 square root of 2 over 10, and then down here I get 4 minus 3 square root of 2 over 10, and I get those components of psi representing psi in the y basis. Well, these pieces can go into that in a natural way. And uh, there's so many things we could also do with this, right? Well, once we, have the, once we have those pieces, we could also ask, what's the expectation value of, of, uh, of SY, of the Y uh, right component of spin, in this basis? And I could say that my... Uh, well, that, that's probably better for another video, rather than just doing this, rather than extending this one. There's a lot we can do with this. I'll show some examples later about more, more that we can do with it. But for now... We've got, these, we've got some results. We've seen how to, use, how to calculate probabilities given these states, and I hope that's a, gets you some practice using quantum calculations.